Hello, I'm Ronnie Eldridge. Welcome to Eldridge and Company. My husband, writer Jimmy Breslin, gets up very early and talks a lot in the mornings. So I told him today to save it and come down with me and let's talk on the show. So welcome. All right, thank let's you. talk about the world. What do you think about it these days? Well, I know is we went, you were with me, we went to uh, the American border, Arizona oh, and right. Mexico. And we looked at this fence. I'll talk about it as if I were the only one there. But I mean, this, this fence, that's all they seem to talk about. They're going to build a fence across the Mexican-Arizona border. We were there right. for that. So we went out, if you recall, out into the desert. I recall because I drove the whole place, 1,200 oh, miles in a couple of days. So Go I don't drive. <laughs> I know. Never driven. Never drove in my life. The, I lived on 101st Avenue when I was on park. The bus stopped right three feet from my front door, the bus to Jamaica, or it went the other way. So you walked up, and there was the A train, about four blocks up at Liberty Avenue and, and uh, Lefferts. A train, right to New York. Or you walked this way to the E and the F, or you walked straight, and you got on this way, and you got on the Long Island Railroad. Yeah, but and you, you went like a cop. You got on at the back car, and you walked to the front. And by the time you were through walking to the front, you are in Penn Station, and the guy never collected a ticket. Oh. That's what cops always did. Uh, but you also had started working very early on a yes. newspaper. What, you were well, 16 I, or 17? I, I, yeah. And you worked nights. Yeah, and I wanted to drink. And then you went work. to the bar. So yeah, I wasn't It would have been dangerous if you I would have been gone okay. soon. So would somebody go else. Go through the L pillars or home yeah. when you got right. a load of Anyway, we, yeah. we, we went to we the went border. To, there was a statue of uh, the first European, meaning white, to, pa to cross the border from, right. from what was it, Nogales, the Cochise County, into into America, yeah, so, yeah. and I was in 1530, it was a Franciscan. And it was in this field, right? All alone. All alone. The mountains were in the distance. Mountains with copper. Wonderful. They have because high they're red. copper yeah. uh, deposits they? in the mountains, yeah. and when the sun hits them in the late afternoon, they turn to burgundy. And it's when it rains, I think type. it also rains down yep. red. Magnificent. And we're there, and they're going to build a fence. I don't know what, to stop the clouds? There's not a human being in sight. There's no, oh, so there's one, there's a U.S. Customs hut, it said. Yeah, right. It was empty. And that's it. It was empty and closed. But <clears throat> what I found was most interesting about that trip was yeah. that most of the people sort of yawned and Nobody said, cares. you know, what is Nobody, this all about? Yeah, they've been going back and forth. They right. have business to, going back and forth in uh, Nogales, for example, if you ever blocked that border and people couldn't get across it to do housework in Nogales, in the American right. side of Nogales, there'd be riots. And the guy, the, we met a man in, in Nogales who said, we don't know what it's all about because we browned out a long time ago, meaning yep. that they intermarried. Yep. And everybody's related to yep. everybody. And their people yeah. come across That's the border right. to see part That's of their right. family and they go back and forth. Yeah. It was in Lukeville, though, that was funny. Lukeville is like a frontier town, yeah. right? There's a strip of stores that has a wooden sidewalk and, you know, the yeah. hang, the overhang, yeah. and the store, store, store. Yeah. And how many dogs were lying there in the sun? Or they were buried themselves into the bushes. They were about eight of them, Every weren't they? Place. Big dogs. Out like a light in out, the sun. In, yeah, because they're trying to get away from the shade. Yeah. And we got into the car and we drove someplace and you asked the customs guy, what do we have, can we take a rented car across the border? Yeah. He said, what are you talking about? You're already across the border. <laughs> You're in Mexico. And so, I mean, that was, it was yeah. really quite amazing, yeah. right? Yeah, that's how it is. So I, and then you come up here on Columbus Avenue and, and uh, 67th Street and there's uh, the coffee shop, the elite, and the, the, the best counter man they have went home to see his family, went home with his wife and son, and he tried to get back across, and he couldn't make it. They turned him back, so then he tried a second time, and he couldn't make it. And in the uh, elite, the coffee shop, Angelo's pacing, the owner's pacing back and forth. We can't last unless he gets back here. They need, there, there isn't a of, cup of coffee in New York you'd get if you don't have Mexicans. And the and, farmers need them on the farm, yeah. and the... And it goes beyond the fact that they're not here to work. 
He said, if they're not here, then we hire people, the, the unions, to take over $25 an hour or something, Angelo said it. And in a, a, your first flash, it'd be $10 for ham and eggs. Yeah, but that we, that's a whole dangerous territory to get into, to say that they're competing with the union, because that's what we don't want to say, well, right? They do. What, what do you mean? You, don't, you say whatever uh, you unions, say. The unions don't want those kind of jobs. They don't. And the, the don't other thing them. is the hotels couldn't make it because they don't have chambermaids. They've got Mexican women who bend their backs until they hurt west, yeah. doing, doing the beds. That's a lot of work. You know, you're lifting mattresses. Chambermaid. Everybody thinks it goes with the room. It's crazy. That is labor. The other and you thing do is that nine or ten rooms, you, you you feel it. We saw there was one election in the district we stayed in Tucson yeah, to drive yeah. to these different places, yeah. and that's where a Minuteman is running, I think, for Congress. Oh yeah, well, they don't but they don't. But he's not going. The Republicans no. weren't even happy with his running because no. he was so extreme. Yeah. They but it was really interesting. On our way from Phoenix to Tucson, we stopped to have lunch at a. You know, one of these roadside places where the truck drivers oh, yeah, start. Yeah, 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 and we're yeah. just sitting there, and the manager comes over, and he says, How you, how's everything? And you started to talk to him. Yeah. And then he, what did he do? He told you. Go look at the bus outside. Yeah. The bus outside was filled with Mexican immigrants that were being taken from Yuma to the airport at Tucson to be flown back to Mexico City. On Air yeah. Mexico. Air Mexico. And the idea of the uh, immigration authorities was... If you send them deep into Mexico, they won't come back so fast. But the, that's the genius. The guys will be back in two days instead of one. Uh, and they think that will end it. It only cost $1,500 a person they were spending. And uh, they, they, it's, it, they're crazy. They sat on the bus until it was time to go. They one of the customs agents told you there was a 10-year-old boy on the bus? Yeah. Oh, they have kids yeah. that come across. The right. women are always found carrying babies coming across. Well, if they want to come here that much, why don't you examine why they're coming, why we're afraid of them coming, why don't we do something about it, set up a system. If they're going to come, then make sure let's do it in the most comfort for all involved. So we're spending billions of dollars oh. on this. Billions well, the of dollars. Fence, how much do you think the fence costs? It, they're going to build uh, a fence. You keep reading it in the papers. Right. How much is it? It's eight, eight uh, billion? I uh, forgot. Billions. Now. And there's a guy in Douglas, in, uh, he was in Lukeville, stands fences, yeah. and he was in tears. He said he only could get the contract for certain kinds of wire, heavy wire, and he couldn't get it for the whole fence, which is what he wanted, that Lockheed was getting the contract to build the whole fence. It's the same old it story, never right? never ends. Lockheed uh, and, Industries... Was involved <laughs> in the in the. Uh, I know what, uh, what was the thing. The parking Queens the, the parking meters in Queens. <laughs> the computers. Everybody went to the can over. Uh, yeah. Handheld parking, parking tickets to tickets. write out the tickets. It punched it. out. That was Lockheed. Yeah. The guy from Lockheed from Jersey went to the can over it. Now it's 15 years later, is it? How many years later? It's 85. I hate to years. tell you, it's yeah, 20 I years. Tell you. I don't want to <laughs> time hear goes it. very fast. I wrote about a lot. Uh, they're, uh, they're back with the same company. It does the commercial thieves, and nobody cares. Well, the, the, the poor guy with the fence company stands fences. He wasn't going to steal as much as Lockheed. He'd take for himself, baby, but he wasn't going to take for the whole So thing. the government is spending a lot of money on yep. something that's really we think ridiculous. Well, they can scare you, though. To them, but it's a big thing they're to also, scare They've scare also you. rented every hotel and motel uh -huh. room in the Gallus, yeah, right? Yeah. Because they have the National Guard the down National there. The National Guard came in <laughs> and uh, from Virginia, this unit. Yeah. They were there for two months. They really loved it, two months from away Iraq from there. To Iraq to the Iraq Lukeville. Iraq to Lukeville. They got a family home. They got a job they want to get to. So they're there, and one big kid there it was good. I said, how's it going? He says, eh, we're here. How many are you stopping from coming across? He says, a few. Some. I said, what do you think it is in the long run? What, say, what will it be like? He says, in 100 years from now, you still won't notice. <laughs> They're going to keep coming, and you can't stop them. They're here to make money. That's the one thing about them. They're not here to steal. Yeah. They're here to work. That's all they want to do. I see this show on the television. I finally watched a couple of it. 
broken borders with his uh, blue dobs. Yeah, I mean, he's the man, obsessed with it. The man is obsessed. The man belongs in a, in a rest. All right. Take a <laughs> cure. That, uh, what does he say? They're coming in here. Well, now, they're having huge drug wars. Nobody even mentioned drugs. Law enforcement people, too. We didn't mention Well, they drugs. do get some drugs. They get oh, marijuana and stuff. They do. What do you think comes from Puerto but Rico? Certainly not as, yeah. I mean, come on. All right, so we're spending all this money on the border, and yeah. at the same time, we're spending all this money in Iraq. Yeah. Yeah. And meanwhile, the deficit grows. Yes. So what's going to happen in Washington? I don't know. You have to have an election first. And then you hope to God anybody that wins isn't as bad as these people, which is always a possibility. Right. So I don't know. It's interesting, isn't it, that, that ev the people, the news people especially, that, that your people, they don't what count. do you call them? They don't count. Pekingese of the press. That media is the plural. Plural of mediocre. <laughs> but and it is. They seem to be, are they surprised at the turn of, a, at the turn, the, the, the uh, general uh, I can't speak for feeling of, of disagreement with I mean, are they shocked that the, the public has now opposed the war in Iraq? Yeah, I think a lot of them are because they never even paid attention to the law, to the war. They didn't do anything. Well, they did pay attention. Ah, come on. Indeed. Yes, they did. Come on, they did. I mean, some of them did. And then they went out. You know, they got embedded. Yeah, that was terrible. That's the worst thing. <laughs> you, you were could. in Vietnam. So were you embedded? Uh, no. Well, what nothing. does that mean? What does embedded mean? They put you in with a unit as if you're part of the unit. And you go right. with the unit wherever and I saw, they go. The other day I saw on, on, on television that they were arguing because some news person from CNN yeah. had gotten some film. He was embedded with somebody or she was yeah. embedded with somebody. Yeah. They'd yeah. gotten some film and about, I don't know, and given yeah. it to, you know, for publication. Yeah. And that that was uh, treasonable almost, that they would be oh, embedded with a unit and show film that was harmful to it. That's every night it used to be. It, I could just speak well, from you Vietnam. Vietnam. Yeah. Every night at 5 o'clock in a hotel, I don't know which one they were saying, uh, the, uh, the United States authorities held a press conference of the day's doings, and it always mostly consisted of that the press was doing a terrible job, they were unpatriotic, they were, were risking soldiers because of these people. Uh, they said... Uh, well, Bush said that the uh, other well, day. Everybody, that's all they say. That uh, the one thing that this country is founded on and, and must rely on to survive is the freedom to, uh, to express yourself one way or the other. Freedom of speech, freedom of press, whatever you want to call it. That, you've got no country without it. So what do they have? They, they want to complain. The first thing they want to do is restrict it. And... Uh, I mean, there was a, the Republican chair of the House Committee on something yeah, yeah, yeah. who's all, running for Congress. Yeah, he's great. He recalled Ernie Pyle. Yeah. And I guess it was Carl Malden yeah. that they were with the troops, but they always supported the troops. Uh, evidently, the CNN but, tape must have shown uh, something uh, bad about what our what some soldiers did uh, or something. And he doesn't understand how the news people today can do that. Teddy Roosevelt said that it is unpatriotic in time of war not to criticize the president. Unpatriotic, un-American to the point of immoral. You're supposed to criticize the president. Now, he was hardly a bleeding heart liberal, but he was smart enough to know what keeps his country together. And it's the truth. Try to tell the truth. Um, you recently, and I know you don't like this, but we're t let's talk about the press. You went to a reunion of the Herald Tribune. Oh, come on, let's go. You were on. dragged into it. <laughs> yeah. What was, what's the difference with newspapers? How, what was it, a 50th reunion or the beginning of it? I don't know what it was. Anyway, what's the difference what's now? What's the Herald Tribune? That's the first start. Well, it was a great paper, right? It, it was a newspaper. Yeah. Yes, it was in this city, a yeah. morning newspaper. With a lot of spirit. With a lot of spirit. And so everybody, everybody was getting paid. And there was a bar on the ground floor of the building, which, yeah. which is important to newspapers. If you have a bar where people go and drink and discuss the day's news, the newspaper invariably is better. If you have a place where they just tap out on the computer the past, I mean, it's well, homogenized. Well, do you think that's why people nothing. aren't reading newspapers? I mean, you were talking about the oh, low boy. circulation of papers. Yeah, yeah. New York Times has 260,000 papers in the city of New York, and people genuflect. 
I don't even look at it. I live in New York City, and they don't, they don't uh, have that much in it that interests me about my city. That is really amazing. They got done. You read it. It's got Connecticut. So, so they have the, the opinion leaders, is what they call them, right? Every and I don't know how they get away with that. They have in the there time to, of this to be city. Too many leaders of opinions. In the time of this city, they have the worst columnists I've ever seen. Well, I reject them out of hand. Oh, you want to see what? Some, the papers had the the American, the Sunday American, a host newspaper, the worst people on earth publishing. Their editor, their up the columns, that Damon Runyon. Gene Fowler that went on to become the biggest writer in Hollywood. Benito Mussolini was a columnist in the American, and he had one of the great columns. But what's interesting was, is they were different kinds of columns. No, the, they were, were humorous. Yeah. They weren't necessary. The, the well, columns today are very serious. You don't like that because you no, think people don't read them. No, they're not serious. You can't call a dull serious. They're dull no, that's a to whole. the point. No, it isn't a whole thing. Dull is a is a, an offense that should be punishable by prison. It's a felony. I'm glad you didn't say death the way you usually do since you're so opposed <laughs> to the death penalty, right? Well, you're allowed to kill somebody really boring. No. Sure. No, you can't do it's that. Better you don't really mean to that. Begin with. Uh, no, it's bad. At so, one time, you had Damon So why Hunting. do you think pe newspapers are doing so poorly? The people on them are mediocre. You think that's what, what it is? Or you well, think it's the price, number well, one? It's, no. a, it's a dollar? Hey, you read it. Now, let's pick it up. You read the lead uh, story in the New York Times, the first paragraph, 50 words, 45 words. The lovely woman here in the building gave me, the, uh, uh, gave me something this morning. I was reading the Times. First, they, the they did very good. No, it was the regular news. They, they did great. They had 40 words in the lead. Nobody's going to read that. That's all there is to it. How many words do you Don't need come. in a lead? Well, well, let's go with how people used to write. Uh, Ernest Hemingway would use 10. John Steinbeck, I once counted them up, 16. Norman Mailer, 4. So these are people who wrote for papers? They wrote for everything. These were people who were read. Let's get down to the right. word, the key word. Do you think the ownership of papers has anything to do with yeah, the demise? Everything. Look at the owners here in New York. You got Zuckerman, uh, nothing terrible. You got Murdoch. What's the circulation of the news? It's about seven hundred thousand, just about. Yeah. What was it in a heyday? I I was working at the New York Daily News on a, a Sunday paper about David Berkowitz had written me a letter, son of Sam, and they ballyhooed it during the week. They sold two million one hundred thousand. Papers, uh, Eddie K. Uh, uh, so does that mean on an average? I mean, you, a usual day they sold a million. Oh yes. More. Oh yes. Oh yes. And no now more. they're selling. No, even. they're lucky they sell. Yeah. The they post got, has the is the post leading in the circulation. No, they're tied or whatever you want. They want to run with uh, Britney Spears, with uh, all these uh, gossip. Columns, but people always had that stuff in those in the news or in the yeah. post. But I mean, not to the extent you make it the first page. It's unbelievable. No. So, um, let's talk about the elections. New why? York State has an election. I don't care. About you don't care. No. Why do, you, why do you not care anymore? You okay, used yeah, to care. I care. What, Is it that you're not writing well, a column on a regular me? basis? No. What do you want from me? You want me to be vitally interested? When you have a, a, a candidate for governor, Spitzer, his father's a landlord, so right away that really thrills me. Number two, we heard him. I didn't hear him alone. A couple of people did. When he said he thinks that ca capital punishment is an appropriate punishment for certain crimes. So Morty Matz called me up right away. He says, here's a Jew. Can go back to Auschwitz, and he wants, he wants the execution. He says, what am I supposed to do, like them? He wants, uh, they want, the, uh, they want, they're going to be nice though. We're not going to have an uh, electric chair with all the sparks shooting out. <coughs> We've got a new way. We're going to inject them with a chemical that will kill so it's them. So one it issue. It causes you to drown in oh, is, one that issue? A, is that an issue that's, oh, that's aligned oh, for oh, you? Oh, death of a, a killing, a, killing somebody. Yeah. The state can do two things wonderfully well. They can collect taxes and kill. Do you think there's a, 
a whole change in politics since the days. I mean, I, when I first met you, yeah. they were Kennedy days. Yeah, you were yeah, you yeah, were yeah, a yeah, delegate okay. for you, Doll. You know, all yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah. There was a fervor and a and a yeah, like. Yeah. But those guys were politicians. I mean, mm -hmm. they were, they had that instinct of people. You know, mm -hmm. they they related to people. Yeah. Nowadays, the interest seems to be I'm a good manager. What does that or mean? Or a prosecutor or yeah. something. What does that mean? What, how did oh, that, they love how to be that happen? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It never happened to me. It never happened to anybody I know. But, but it's happened in politics, hasn't it? Yes. 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 Well, you had Nixon and that Agnew he brought in with them, and they stood for lousiness. And it lasted. Lasted a while. Ronald Reagan, everybody seems to like. He put a smile on being lousy. I don't think he was. Uh, and now, what did you have? You had one chance. You had, you had, you had a lot of trouble. You had a Kennedy shot dead. You had a, uh, Robert Kennedy shot dead. You had Martin Luther King shot dead. I mean, it And then you had Watergate. Start, the Watergate. And that made people cynical, you think? I don't know. It was good. A lot of people got thrown out or put in jail. I liked it. Was that now, they were going to do something. John Doerr will tell you the Watergate was running the Republican uh, prosecution of the Watergate was that they had a committee that uh, a fellow named Haldeman from the right. Nixon White House was in charge of inside the White House to rescind the rule, the law about succession at the end of two terms that, so Nixon could run and be a third term, which Giuliani tried to put over on people here in New York. I want to run again. He just wanted it for a couple of months. He, he just said. wanted it. He, he's, a, he's a fascist. All right. Yes. He's a little man on a balcony. Do you think that Cheney most resembles the people in the Nixon administration? Now, I got Cheney. I, I, I remembered him a long time. They took a picture of Cheney during, what was it, the first trouble with Iraq? Yeah, that would be it. Yeah, Saddam Hussein they were going against or something. There he was with a magic marker pen signing a bomb that was being put on a plane to bomb them. And he said, to Saddam, hi, Dick Cheney. Then he had this smile. He thought that was great. He's got a bomb personally. They're going to try and kill uh, Saddam with the bomb. He thought it was marvelous. I said, that's a sick man. That man should be put away. Should be corralled. He never was corralled. They let him out. He never stopped running around. He seems to have this magical power over Bush, doesn't he? I mean, I obviously know. Rumsfeld is. Cheney's. I don't know what Bush. I don't know if Bush knows where he is half the time. I think he drinks. That seems to. You look at him, he drinks. Or oh, don't make a face. Don't don't ever question me when I say a guy drinks too much. I could tell <laughs> at noon or three in the afternoon, any time. It's just what he talks. Have him say one sentence. I say drunk. That's all you could tell. I could tell anyway. He, it's that, it's, 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 uh, he drinks that non-alcoholic beer on the plane, he loves it right around on, and the minute he gets off, he drinks the, uh, the soap, or was that a pretzel that he choked to death on at one time, which I love that story. Uh, so therefore, Cheney, is it easy mark for Cheney to take over? Cheney came from his father. You know. But I don't think the father appears to be too happy. I don't know. We don't know. I'm not right. there. I don't trust anything I hear or read or hear. Right. So who do you think should be the next president of the United States? I have no idea. Well, what let do you think see. about all well, the candidates who are running? Who are they? I mean, who? Well, we don't know, but I mean, it ap appears to be... Hillary Clinton's for the war and for capital punishment. Thank you. But, you who know, else? But you still, who else you still said yeah. that it's a very powerful thing that she's a woman running for. Yeah, I, she I'm right. I saw the first woman that comes up able to run... That should be uh, get my support automatically. She's for the electric. Well, we haven't had. I mean, she's we, for the war. Let her send the. We had Golda Meir, Margaret Thatcher. Right. The okay. women who yeah. get there are pretty warlike, yeah, aren't but, they? Yeah, but let her. I don't care. But she's now I'm having second thoughts about the war. Let her send her daughter to Iraq and fight. If she wants it so much, let's go. Go all the way. Put your cards. What about on the Mr. Table. Baraka, Senator Baraka? I, you know, it's funny. We were talking a lot. And then came uh, the New Orleans, which was exposed as a, as a big Soweto, that's all. 
and now its population is 60,000, that's all, and we're worried about it. It's not big enough to be Ridgewood in Queens. Uh, he was among the missing. I don't know where he was. I asked Cuomo one morning, what about the Barack? He says, yeah, that's a good question. Where is he? He was nowhere. It's it was Baraka. his song. Ob Obama Barack. Baraka. They're playing his song. Right. New Orleans. So wait, he was, we didn't, I didn't so see So what him. about Al Gore? You, he's all yours. He's a bore. I can't okay. stand it. I, I but he's to, steady I, and trustworthy. Yeah, a bore. I cannot right. handle anybody that's boring. Bad. Right. right. What for? Well, the, Who are we going to have? The world doesn't seem know. to be filled with too much joy and humor. Well, let does them it? try it. <laughs> I can't. Who, 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 who do you know that isn't boring? I don't know, but these guys are. There's not one of these politicians you're talking about that I would have a, anybody in a bar would spend more than half a swallow with. Like, could you see Al Gore in the bar with you? No. Who else do you want to go to? I. Obama looks well, like I think he could Gore go. could be fun. He I don't could? Know. Yeah. I think well, oh, if he's boy. loose enough, I don't know. Good. Yeah. Baraka right. does look, yeah. He looks like he could have a drink with him, Right, yes. right. That to me is a big But guy. your hero seemed to me to be murder. Yeah, where is he? Now, there's one, obviously, he's an American hero. Right. Representative America from Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Right. Who else took a stand? He was the only one to take a stand, and now they're all copying him. Put the troops, it's an old British term, in barracks. Send them out to Kuwait, send them here. Keep them on the ready to look like you're menacing people. Nothing. Beware of dog. Just send them away so they don't get killed. Thank you. We're yeah. at the end. If there are any people you'd like to hear and topics you'd like us to explore, please let me know. You can write to me at CUNY TV, 365 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10016. Or you can go to the website at CUNY.TV and click on Contact Us. I look forward to hearing from you.